G'day viewers, my name's Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists in Australia do what they do. Welcome back viewers. Well, um, Pete's been working on his drawing while we've uh, been having a bit of a break and as you can see he's really made some extraordinary progress with it. Um, but Pete, you wanted to, part of the reason we're here today was two reasons was obviously because of the drawing, but you wanted to show us a little bit about one of the oil paintings that you've, uh, you've got in progress at the moment. Um, a horse in Erstenville, is that right? Erskineville in Sydney, yeah. Erskineville, that's yeah. right. So how about we take this guy down? And then uh, we put the oil painting up and uh, we'll watch you paint the oil for a little while. Okay, that'll That's be good. Great. Well, as you can see viewers, Pete's actually put this magnificent uh, work up here. It's quite extraordinary. I, I love the, uh, the perspective you've got in here as well, mate. It's just wonderful. And you're going to be working on this horse for us. Yes, yeah, so in looking at it, a way that uh, the light doesn't work on this horse so mm -hmm. I just want to bring the detail up in him and, and also the light mm -hmm. so it works with the background. That's a wonderful piece. Uh, well, let's, um, let's let you get stuck into it then. Shall do. Okay mate, well this looks like it's actually on linen. Yeah, Belgian. Belgian linen, it? yeah. That's uh, pretty yeah. expensive, isn't it? Yeah, it is, but I think I think it's worth going to the extra expense on a larger painting because you want that sort of drum mm. feel, particularly when you're painting. Mm. Um, and Belgian linen seems to retain that. Yeah, yeah, I can just see from the angle here the really fineness of the yeah, of the stitches. Yeah, it's in beautiful. There. Yeah, we'll see because like earlier I loved drawing um, by giving this a, a really a couple of coats of, of gesso and sanding it back. Yeah, I almost get that paper like. Sure. Um, sort of feel to, to smooth, the drawing, yeah, because this is all drawn, all drawn underneath first. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I love the, as I said, I love the perspective in this picture. So, yeah. you're you're about to use some archival oils. Why are you using archival oils on on pictures like this? Well, I, I like the consistency of, of their colour and mixing. Mm -hmm. uh, I find I just found with some oils, I, if you if like the, the standard forms of mixing colour, mm -hmm. putting blue and blue and yellow and getting green, mm -hmm. uh, the, archi the archivals in particular, I've just, I've, I have confidence using, using archivals on, on, for that reason, plus they're, they're really lovely to apply and you don't get cracking. Some paints mm -hmm. I've used in the past, you get, you, you'll get a cracking in certain areas, sure. I, don't, I don't get that with archivals. It's great, so. no, it's amazing. Yeah, so yeah no, they're, they're, not, they're a lovely paint to use. Let's look at what you do then. So, and it's obviously just the, the highlights that we're working on, but, and, and, and the most important thing obviously in painting, or just about anything, I suppose, direction of light, isn't it? Sure, I just, this painting, this painting I had considered finished, but I didn't like it because this is the main subject, mm -hmm. but my eye wasn't drawn to that as much as I wanted it to be. Sure. Whether, I mean, the light is coming from obviously this direction by these shadows mm -hmm. and this falling here, there will be reflected light as we talked earlier in the drawing and I didn't think that I had, well I definitely don't, there's no thinking, I, I don't have that showing sufficiently enough within, within the horse which is the, um, the main subject. The guy's face is going to be obscured a bit, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's really getting the light into the, uh, into the horse here mm -hmm. and getting his form um, a lot stronger. All right, I'll let you get into it. No sweat. I like to get a good a good tip on the end of on the end of my brush, mm -hmm. and I'll I'll over exaggerate this to start with. Yeah, look at that, it's come up straight away. Then. So what's what type of brush you got there? 
is it? It's a Roy Mac, okay. Yeah. 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 So I, yeah, I, I use the Roy Macs myself. They sort of tend to really hold a good consistent yep. tip to them and they don't when you when you actually put them on they spring back. Yeah they do. They don't stay, which is, which yeah. is great. And I don't use big brushes. Very rarely I'll use a big brush in any of my work uh -huh. because it, I'm just more comfortable using it like a pencil. I can remember when I was um, at work, I was working with a New York dealer many years ago and I sort of got sort of fairly meticulous with the work sometimes and he just said to me, Graham, he says, you know what, sometimes less is more. Yeah. So yeah, don't, yeah. you know, don't, don't overwork it. I mean, just leave the stroke there mm. so that the stroke tells the story instead of having to drive it into the canvas. Yeah, yeah. And you see some of the, um, you know, the great masters in the past, it was, you're drawn to a, either a, you know, just a brush stroke that, mm. that, that lit up an ocean or mm. lit up a tree or lit up a mountain or lit up a Mon part Mon of, a, a beautiful example, example. Yeah. beautiful example, yeah. Beautiful example. yeah. So have you been into this street at all? Yeah, my daughter actually just lived down the end, down the end here. Okay. Um, when, um, when she was at fashion, when she attended fashion school, she and a friend of hers from school okay. lived down there. So this is, um, this is Gary, Gary Street here. In this particular corner, there are these four beautiful buildings on, on each corner. I've, I've actually done a number of paintings based on this um, based on this street only I did one another one from sort of back up here looking mm -hmm. looking towards me with the horseman coming around the corner and the idea this came from a, a mate of mine moved from the bush to Sydney and just sort of seemed a bit lost on the move and I came up with this idea that you know you can take the boy out of the bush you can't take the bush out of the boy mm -hmm. and he moved to Sydney and even though he left the property the one thing that did go with him was the Kelpie dogs and he used to take them down every afternoon and muster the, muster the birds and the pigeons in the park with his dogs so he could never really get rid of it but uh, that's sort of where the, the idea of this, uh, of this painting came from, yeah. Well viewers, um, we're going to let uh, Pete finish up this uh, picture at the moment. It's been an absolute privilege to be with him today. He's an extraordinarily talented artist, a uh, brilliant horseman. Great, great guy as well. Uh, I think he's a wonderful man. Uh, the the crew's really enjoyed uh, watching Peter do what he's what he's done today, and obviously being able to come into your wonderful galleries, the uh, Wind Horse Gallery and the Blue Bicycle Gallery. But I'd really like to thank you, Bud, for having us along. It's been a great pleasure. If you would like to see more of the great artists like Peter and his work and some of the other artists we've got, you can go to colourinyourlife.com.au. Uh, and see all of the stuff we've got in there. If you're an artist, you're most welcome to come in and put your own work up as well. But until we see you, see you next time, remember, make sure you put some colour in your life.